Hi, my name is Anuradha Karupia. I am a software developer at NVIDIA. And today I'm going to be talking about EVPN multi-homing. Before diving into multi-homing, let's look at the requirements of Active Active Redundancy. Here we have a two-level class with two racks, rack one and rack two. There are two top of rack switches in each rack. These top of rack switches are at the L2, L3 boundary. They are the EVPN P's and serve as VTIPs to extend the broadcast domain from rack one to rack two. The servers on the rack host 11 and host 21 are dual attached to the top of rack switches. This of course is for the purpose of active active redundancy. Now let's say host 11 wants to send traffic to host 21. Host 11's uplinks, the server uplinks are bonded together in a link aggregation group. So it can load balance the traffic via TOR 11 or TOR 12. Let's say it picks TOR 11. TOR 11 VXLAN encapsulates the traffic and sends it to RAG 2, TOR 21 specifically. TOR 21 then decapsulates and forwards the traffic to host 21. This is a simple bridge traffic from RAG 1 to RAG 2 using eVPN. Now let's say there is a second flow from host 11 to host 21. This is being load balanced via TOR 12 and TOR 22 as you can see. So in a steady state, the traffic is load balanced across all the top of rack switches in the pod. What happens when a link fails? Let's say the link between host 11 and TAR 12 goes down. The traffic that was being forwarded via this link needs to fail over and the failover happens via TAR 11. Similarly, if TAR 12 goes down, this could be a switch failure, unplanned switch failure, or a planned switch upgrade. Traffic similarly fails over via TAR 11. The third failure that we're going to handle is uplink failure. Let's say the uplinks on TAR 12, all of the uplinks go down. TAR 12 is now isolated from the VXLAN overlay and it's no longer going to be able to forward traffic to RAC 2. To address the situation, we use uplink tracking. Uplink tracking tracks the carrier status of the uplinks and when all of the uplinks go down, the access links are error disabled and doing that enables host 11 to switch its traffic to TAR 11. Active Active Redundancy in the past has been implemented using MLAG, multi-chassis link aggregation. MLAG requires the two top of rack switches to be physically connected using the ISL or the pair link. So this is a tight coupling between the two top of rack switches. It is a MLAG pair and the two switches use the same VTIP IP address 3600.11 as you can see on rack 1 and 3600.13 on rack 2. This is the Anycast VTIP IP address. So the two MLAG switches appear as a single next hop on remote VTIPs. MLAG is entirely local to a rack, so let's take a closer look at one of the MLAG pairs, TAR11 and TAR12. MLAG is a proprietary mechanism, and it involves synchronizing forwarding databases between the two MLAGs, which is in the pair, the MAC FTB and the neighbor table. In addition, consistency checks are run between the two MLAG switches. All of this is using a proprietary me messaging mechanism over the peer link that attaches the two top of rack switches. Let's look at how traffic failover is handled in MLAG. Let's say there is a traffic flow coming in from rack two to rack one, specifically from host 21 to host 11. Now the server link between host 11 and TAR 12 goes down. Traffic needs to failover, and this failover happens via the ISL or the PR link. So traffic is going to be forwarded from TAR 12 to TAR 11, which then decapsulates and sends it down to host 11. The PR link in uh, MLAG setup is used for both control traffic as well as for failover of data traffic. That was MLAG. MLAG is the legacy mechanism for active active redundancy. EVPN ESI based multi homing or EVPN multi homing is a new alternate to MLAG. It is entirely standards based and uses the EVPN type 1 route, the Ethernet auto discovery route, and the type 4 route, the Ethernet segment route, for discovering Ethernet segments in the pod. The type 2 route, the MAC IP route, is advertised with a non zero Ethernet segment ID and used for learning hosts on remote tracks as well as for synchronizing hosts across Ethernet segment pairs. Ethernet segment is a fundamental construct to multi-homing. An Ethernet segment is a group of server links, links that are attached to the same host. So in this example, you can see TAR11 and TAR12 are attached to host11. Those links are called ES11. 
Similarly, ES12 is attached to host 12, ES21 to host 21, and ES22 to host 22. The Ethernet segment ID is unique across the entire pod, and it's advertised using the Ethernet auto discovery route. This type one route is used for building a ES mapping table on each EVPN P. The ES mapping table or the alias table identifies the VTIPs that are attached to an Ethernet segment. In a network with EVPN multi-homing, there is no special relationship between the top of rack switches. There is no ISL, there is no sharing of VTIP IP addresses. Each EVPN P has a unique IP address. So how is failover handled? Let's take a look at that. Let's say there is traffic coming from rack two to rack one, from host 21 to host 11. And this traffic is being load balanced by TOR21 to rack one. This can be via TOR11 or TOR12. In this particular case, TOR21 has picked TOR11 as the next stop of forwarding the traffic. Now let's say the link between TOR11 and host 11 goes down. The traffic has to fail over and that's TOR12. The way this happens is by TOR11 detecting the link as down and sending a Ethernet auto discovery route withdraw for Ethernet segment 11. The withdraw results in the ES mapping table being updated on all of the PEs to remove TAR11. So TAR21 is no longer going to use TAR11 as a next hop. Instead, it fails the traffic over via the remaining next hop, TAR12. TAR12 then sends the traffic to host 11. And that's how traffic fails over in a EVPN multi-home network. In EVPN multi-homing, there is no special relationship between the top of rack switches. So it's possible to have more than two switches in a redundancy group. In this example, you can see on rack one, the servers host 11 and host 12 are triple attached to the top of rack switches via Ethernet segment 11 and Ethernet segment 12. So there you have it, EVPN with MLAG and EVPN multi-homing. Two solutions to the same problem set. MLAG is not native to EVPN, so it makes for this oddly patched quilt. Yet it's one that works well and has been worn in over the past several years. Multi-homing on the other hand has been designed for the express purpose of active-active redundancy in an EVPN network and it unifies the entire network under a single technology. Which solution do you pick? That depends on your use case and your convictions. Even if you have been using EVPN with MLAG in your network, multi-homing is worth considering as a longer-term alternative.